Once you have a good story angle, you'll need to get good quotes from your interview sources to make sure that your uh, whole story stays on track to be excellent. This particular lecture, How to Rock Out Interviews, will help you do that. So our target for interviews uh, starts at the one level with you can explain the principles of a good interview. You should be able to at least tell me what goes into a good interview. At a two level, you can plan to conduct a good interview. At a three, you can, in fact, conduct a good interview. And at a four, you can do that and keep your source comfortable. A lot of students and people in general um, find being interviewed to be a little bit stressful. So if you can keep them happy and comfortable and they can tell you so, that's a good sign that you're doing your job well. All right, first steps in having a good interview. You all want to uh, make sure that you know how to get information. Observe often on the event or uh, activity that you have to be covering for your story, okay? And that's on you, it's not on other people. You need to go and you need to see for yourself. And then make sure that you're interviewing a knowledgeable source, okay? Find someone who really knows what's going on with a team or a club or a class and make sure that you're getting information from those types of people. As far as the interview itself goes, like all other things, plan, okay? Identify good sources and do uh, select multiple sources. You may find that some people are less willing to talk than others, and even people you think would be a good source don't always have a lot to say. So have several people in mind that you can talk to. No basic information going into your interview. You should already know scores and stats. You should already know who, what, when, and where. An interview is not a time to be like, hey, so tell me what happened in general. Uh, one, that tells your interview source that you don't really know or care about what they're doing. Two, it, it's not going to net you any good information. How do you know what questions to ask if you don't even know what happened? Third, make an appointment. Now, I know this is going to sound a bit weird, right? Like, why would I make an appointment with a student? That's strange. They're going to think I'm crazy. But quite frankly, people are busy. Students are just the same. Everyone has lots to do and little time to do it. So don't expect them to simply get back to an email um, if they're already busy or to simply make time in the, in the middle of a school day if you catch them between classes. They don't want to be tardy. Set up a good time to meet and give yourself some time to talk. It can be good to give a time frame. Hey, would you be available between um, 2 and 4 on such and such a day? Uh, would you be available after school? Would you be available before school? What about lunch? Or would you prefer email? Okay. And then go to the source. Okay. Let them pick the place. Do you want to meet in the commons? Do you want to meet in the library? Let them decide. That's part of keeping them comfortable. Okay. So we're still planning here. You've set up your time. You know who you're going to meet. You know where you're going to meet them. And you already know a little bit about the event. Good for you. Now you still need to plan and write your questions. You want to start with easy questions. We call these leading questions. And that can be things like, just to verify, you are the captain of NHS. Um, or am I right that the score was 21 to 0? Show them that you already know a bit about the topic. They will feel more comfortable. Then build your open-ended questions. Now, in a nutshell, these are probably going to be why and how questions, but I've got some good leads for you on the next slide here. Use more open-ended questions than leading questions to get the best quotes possible. Your goal should be to get your source talking. You should be doing much less talking than they are. So some good open-ended question starters that you might employ as you're planning out your questions. Tell me about, and then fill in the blank with whatever it is you need information on. What was going through your mind? Or tell me moment by moment what happened. Or what was the first thing that came to your mind? Or what did you see or hear or touch? How did it look, sound, feel? Looking back, how would you sum it up? And what does the season mean to you now, for example? Okay? This isn't an end-all, be-all list of open-ended questions, but you can rely on these pretty heavily and get some good quotes from them. Once you've done all of your planning, including writing out your questions, you're ready to actually do your interview. So you meet on your agreed upon time and your agreed upon location. Your first job should be to make your source comfortable. You'll want to greet them, say hi, and if it's an adult or if it's someone unknown to you, it's not a bad idea to shake hands. This is a professional touch that will benefit you in the long run, to be sure. Focus. Don't be on your cell phone, people. Don't be chewing gum. Make sure that your one priority is talking with your source. They've taken time out of they, their day to meet with you. Be respectful and show them that you're focused just on them. During the interview, control the tempo. It is okay to ask a source to slow down, okay? I mean, you might use your iPad to record, 
that's fine. But if you don't, if you are typing out responses, it's okay to say, hey, ooh, can you can you slow down just a minute? Or if you don't want to do that, you can ask for elaboration. Can you tell me more about that? Or why do you say that? And don't be afraid of wait time. There's nothing scarier than asking a question and being greeted by silence, but usually that's people thinking about how they're going to respond. It's okay to wait even up to five seconds, okay? So if someone gets quiet on you, count to five slowly in your head and see if they're just coming up with something to share. Take notes. Take notes on key facts. Write down good quotes that they say. You can also write down details such as with their smiling and frowning and other emotional indicators. These can be nice, especially if you're doing a feature style of article. Okay, because then you can add that into your narrative. When you're done with your interview, you've asked all of your questions, you feel you've gotten all the information that you need, be sure to thank your source. Again, they've taken time out of their day. Their life is busy, so thank them for their time. Ask if it's okay to contact them with further questions, and you can also add in, how would you like me to contact you, email, in person? And then be sure to check your facts and name spelling immediately after, okay? Especially name spelling. That's critical. Uh, we want to make sure that we get those correct for reference reasons for both our yearbook and our newspaper, but also because people tend to get a little insulted when you don't actually know their name. I will throw out one final tip for you uh, on this closing slide. It is strongly recommended that you do your interviews in person. Over the past few years with the iPads, many of our staff members have used uh, email to gather their information. But the problem is, is it's much easier to ignore an email than it is to ignore someone who is sitting down talking to you face to face. So if you really want to get your information in a timely manner, seek your people out. Um, make sure that you're talking to them in person. I think you'll probably get more information that way too because people don't tend to want to type long responses via an email. Again, to get the best responses, to get the best quotes, to get the best feedback for your articles, do be sure to talk to your sources in person.